So we also shot uh, some instant pictures on with a SLR 680 camera. Uh, these, uh, it's the type of film that spits the picture out the front. It's called integral film. The chemicals are all in here. Uh, there's many, many layers. There's a layer of mylar on top. There's a layer of emulsion and uh, the backing layers. What we're going to do now is called an emulsion lift. And you cut the picture apart and you separate the layers to take the emulsion layer out and then you put that emulsion layer on a piece of watercolor paper. Uh, it's, it's artistic but it's also a way to preserve the picture. I think it's a bit more stable when it's on watercolor paper as opposed to uh, still within this piece of film that has all the chemicals in it still. It's a really easy process. Um, you just need a few things, a tray of water and some scissors and some brushes. Impossible Project makes this great lift it kit. Uh, you can get brushes from the paint store or from the art store. They work just as well. So the first step is to cut the border off the picture. There's no image beside or behind this white part anyway. The picture is sealed along the edges, so by cutting this off, you're allowing it to break up into the layers. You will get a bit of blue kind of goo that comes from it. Um, the Impossible Project film is not as smelly or toxic as the Polaroid film ever used to be. Um, I would still just be careful with it. Wash your hands, don't eat. After doing this, you can see the blue on the scissors here. Um, but you're pretty okay. If you're very sensitive, just wear gloves. Uh, the uh, important thing to know is these lifts need to be done within two or three days of taking the picture. If you wait too long, then it solidifies in there. You can't get it separated. So I've cut the edge off the picture. And then you just peel the front from the back. Sometimes the picture sticks to the layer on the front, and sometimes it sticks to this white layer that's on the back. Uh, it doesn't matter either way. It works both ways. It's just whatever side the picture is stuck to, that's what side will go in the tray of water. Today it's going to stick to the front. And this will be interesting. Some of it, don't worry about the white stuff. We'll take that off after. Because you can actually see that it's transparent now too, which is kind of interesting. So right now we have the mylar and then the layer containing the image in here. So that's going to go in the water. This water, this water is fairly cool. It can be cool to warm. It doesn't need to be really hot. It doesn't seem to matter much either way. And it just needs to soak for a few minutes. This white stuff will start coming off quite quickly. But what you're watching for is small bubbles to start forming in the layer that contains the image. And you will start to see it after a while. You just have to be patient with it. While we're waiting, you can wipe some of this white stuff off too. Creates a bit of a mess in the water and sometimes I do this with two trays of water. So I'll have this tray uh, that is the first one that you put the image in that all the white stuff will come off of. And then I'll have a second tray of clean water that I'll transfer it to after. So you can see it's starting to lift off right here. It does it quite suddenly, actually. It just comes, starts to come off there. So then very carefully, you brush the layer, the image layer, away from the mylar. The image doesn't sit in very much. For the whole of the picture, everything that makes up the picture, this very thin layer is what actually contains the image. So this piece of mylar we don't need anymore. And it's just a floating image. You can pick it up and flip it over. Right now it's backwards. So you want to make sure that it's the correct orientation when you put it down. If there's text in it, you'll be able to see it. If there's not, then it doesn't really matter. You maybe want to flip it. You could just flip it up, 
pick it up and flip it over like that if you want. You have to be fairly gentle with it, but it's quite stronger than you think it is. It takes a bit of practice to learn how much you can play around with it before it is damaged. So then you just take one of the pieces of paper. You can use lots of different kinds with little petals in it or just plain watercolor. I think I'm going to put this one on a silver paper. The silver is quite nice. You just very carefully coax the image up onto here. The paper that you use needs to be able to go in water for some length of time. If it can't stand up to being wet, like a really thin tissue paper, then it's not really good to do transfers with. So what I do is I just put it underneath the water and I grab two corners and just flatten it. This silver paper is quite slippery, so you have to be careful it's not going to come right off. The watercolor paper it tends to stick to right away. This paper is also curling quite a bit. It's a bit harder to work with. But you get the silver showing through, which is kind of interesting. If we were to put it on the paper with the petals, you'd have some of the petals showing through. Now, because it's so soft, you can either lay it flat, or you could do little wrinkles in it, lay it out maybe differently on here. It's up to you what you want to do with it. You can brush it around. Some people tear it purposely because it gives it kind of interesting torn edges. This one's got a bit of a tear happening in the top, so I have to be careful with it. Once it starts to rip in a little spot, then it gets uh, quite weak right there, and it will tear very easily. And then once you've got it how you'd like it, you just lay it flat on a piece of paper towel and let it dry, and it will stick to the paper. I haven't really had any that don't stick very well, so stick to the paper, and then you can frame it however you like. Very simple. It will dry quite a bit flatter too. It looks a bit textured right now just because of the layers that are still underneath there. But when it dries down, it'll flatten quite well.